Hi, I'm Phyllis from southernfrugal.com and I wanted to talk to y'all a little bit about uh, what I believe about food. I guess I don't know what to entitle this, something about food. But anyway, um, as I've stated, let me move y'all back, hold on. There, there, that's better. All right, <clears throat> as I have mentioned in several of my videos over the past couple of years, uh, some of the things that I believe about food. So I have had uh, a number of people uh, have written in with uh, um, the way they do it is with the private messages to uh, it goes into my inbox but it doesn't really show up on the comments on the videos it's just a private message of people that have had um, breast cancer people that, that have diabetes and a lot of different diseases and asking me if I thought uh, the green smoothies would help them and if so what which kind and what particular things should they put in it and of course you know I, I'm not even a nutritionalist so I couldn't really answer those questions but I thought if I tell you uh, how uh, Mr. Bucky and I came to believe what we believe that might help you now this is going to be based on uh, the Christian beliefs, that's what it's going to be based on, and many other, oh, sorry I kicked the camera, uh, many other religions uh, in the world um, use, uh, have certain diets that they follow. I think the people in India are vegetarian, I don't think they eat meat, and uh, uh, just a, a lot of different dietary things that go along with their religious beliefs. And uh, we also know that some of the healthiest people in the world are, are raw, green, vegan. They eat everything raw and they eat a lot of fruit and a lot of greens and melons and stuff like that. And they're very healthy and none of them are fat. They don't have diabetes. They don't have heart disease and all that. So, uh, of course, now, Mr. Bucky's 75 years old. He'll soon be 76. I'm 69. We'll soon be 70. And uh, we have decided to uh, turn our diet around uh, over, over the last many, many years, long before I started making videos. And uh, so it, in doing that, uh, first of all, I wanted to search out what does God's Word say about it. I wanted to know that, you know, and uh, I had not spent a whole lot of time thinking about it, even though I know like in the Old Testament, the uh, Jewish people have certain uh, dietary rules that they have to follow in the way they slaughter animals and how you can't combine this with that and, you know, if they're kosher Jews, you know. And some of y'all might be, be, be Jewish, so you know what I'm talking about. But um, anyway, how to be healthy, how to live in the earth and be healthy, that's really what this is about. So um, I'd say um, I watched uh, videos on green smoothies and before I started making videos on them and before we got the Vitamix, I was growing kale in the garden and they were saying that kale was so healthy so I put it in a smoothie one morning and it was terrible. It was awful. We drank a couple of swallows and it went down the drain and I thought, well, I don't know how these people are doing it. But then, of course, it, the more videos you look at and look at a whole bunch of different people's videos, uh, you realize they were putting citrus in it. And finally, uh, uh, one lady said, put orange juice in it and it'll kill the taste of the green. So that was a big discovery, right? To, to be able to put the orange juice in because you'll never know the greens are in there and you can drink them. And of course, we've been drinking them for uh, the smoothies with greens in them for, for really more than six months now and it works perfect. But anyway, I wanted to get back to the, the uh, scriptural basis for why we eat the way we do. Now, I'm taking all of the scripture, this is my very old Amplified Bible, I think it's about 35 years old, and it's sort of falling apart, but I've got all my notes in it and everything, so I still use it. So anyway, the scripture will be coming from the Amplified Bible. And the first reference um, is in Genesis 1, verse 29. I'm just going to read this. And it, again, it's from the Amplified. It'll read a little different in the King James or other versions, the New American Standard and all. It reads a little different, but the basic principle is the same. So this is what God said. 
And God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of the land, and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. All right, got that. All right, so you can just think of everything you eat now that, that falls within all those categories. And of course, there's no mention of meat or milk or any kind of animal product. He's talking really about uh, seeds and, and fruits, things that, that, that come from trees. And he does uh, take it, I have given you every plant yielding seed, and I, we'll get into a little more on the green stuff. Okay, so then in Genesis 1.30, it's, this is for the animals. And to all the animals on the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the ground, to everything in which there is the breath of life, which would include us too, I have given every green plant for food. There you have it. There's your kale, right? All right, so then uh, this, this, of course, was in Genesis, and then we know that the world became wicked, and and God sent the flood, and of course Noah built the ark and saved all the uh, animals, both the clean and the unclean. And Mr. Bucky pointed out to me this morning that, that he uh, commanded Noah to uh, keep seven pairs of the animals that were clean and one pair of the animals that were unclean. Whatever they were, it doesn't really tell you in that scripture at that point. But anyway, uh, so of course God sent the flood on the earth and killed every living thing on the earth except for those that were in the ark. And so after the flood, they had nothing growing anywhere to eat to begin with. So in Genesis 9-3 it says, uh, God said, Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. And as I give you the green vegetables and the plants, I give you everything. So we know that Noah sacrificed uh, to the Lord animals, and obviously they ate the meat then. So that's the, the first time we really know of man eating meat. We also know that in the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve got thrown out, that God slaughtered some kind of animals and used the skin to make clothes for them. So we know that. So anyway, uh, it, it, further instruction uh, was uh, to Noah, but you shall not eat flesh with the life of it, which is the, the blood. So we know that the Jewish people have a certain way of slaughtering animals, and, and even we do that. I mean, you hang the deer up and let all the blood drain out. You do the same with a chicken, and you just let all the blood drain out. Now, there are some cultures in the world that eat all kinds of animal blood, all kinds, like pig blood and whatever. So uh, that would be against my religion. I wouldn't do that myself. But anyway, uh, I, I said that kind of joking, but I would have trouble doing it just because it would probably make me sick. Even thinking about it would make me sick, right? So uh, then uh, when I was searching all this out in the Bible, this has been years ago now, I actually ended up, I was vegan for two full years, and I'll have to tell you, I lost a bunch of weight, I felt good, I had tons of energy, and my biggest worry was, am I getting enough protein? Now, where in the world does that come from? Why was I so worried about that? Because literally everything you eat, including fruit, has protein in it. So, I don't know, I was just real worried. So the government, I think, says you need 65 grams of protein a day. And of course the easiest way to get that is just eat meat and drink milk. That's the easiest way to get it. Eat eggs, animal products. So uh, anyway, I was worried about that. But then I finally I got smart and I said, wait a minute. I feel great. I've lost weight. I've got tons of energy. I'm not going to worry about the protein. So I started uh, deciding uh, to check every meal I had during the day and I did that for a week or so and found out that I was roughly getting 30 to 35 grams of protein a day in what I was eating but I was feeling fine and I wasn't losing muscle tone and all that in fact I was probably in better shape than I am now as far as that goes doing all kinds of work in the yard painting in the house refinishing floors and that, all kinds of stuff 
And but somehow, you know, you're thinking, wait a minute, the government says I need 65 grams of protein, and I only got 30 or 35 today. Ooh, what am I going to do? You know. So uh, the only thing I can see that uh, vegans and 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 even people who are vegetarian might lack would be vitamin B12. And I think maybe you might need to take supplements for that if you're totally vegan. You know, I think that you probably need supplements because uh, your body can make uh, B12 in your intestines, but it's got to have all this bacteria that comes from dirty vegetables. I mean, it, it literally, your body can make it, but it, it can't make it if you're just eating everything clean, right? That's my understanding of it. You know, some of y'all might know, know more about that than I do. But I do remember uh, my mother, uh, they diagnosed her with uh, pernicotious anemia. Uh, I guess she was probably in her 40s. And she would go twice a week to get a B12 shot because when you take the supplements, you have to take a ton uh, of grams in, or micrograms because your body destroys that B12. So now they make a B12 that's a subliminal that you put under your tongue and let it dissolve and your mucous membranes can absorb it that way because your, your, your stomach acid destroys it. But anyway, my mother would go get those shots twice a week and I remember you know, about the time it was time for her to go get a shot, she would start going downhill and kind of you'd see her laying on the sofa a lot in the afternoon because she would get real tired. But anyway, uh, of course, she got much better later in life from that. So anyway, I want to get back to the scripture now. And the, the, the scripture that uh, stumped me was this, because I was... Um, uh, you know, milk, of course, being an animal protein or an animal product, uh, I was concerned about that. And, and I couldn't get past the scripture where God uh, promised uh, the children of Israel a land flowing with milk and honey. There was the milk in the scripture. What in the world was that all about? And I still haven't resolved that. So if some of y'all know more about that than I do, which I know little Leave me some comments below because I don't, I don't really understand that part. But I do think that in the beginning, God's intention was that, uh, you know, we, uh, a, a plant-based food, fruits and greens and whatever. Uh, now, there was a place where it said, after Adam and Eve got thrown out of the garden, that the ground was cursed because of their sin and uh, that they would have to work, you know, plowing and all, and by the sweat of their brow and all that, and talked about the weeds and everything. Now, in that context, there is a, a, a video, and I'm going to leave a link to that down below. In fact, there's a lot of videos. I think it's called uh, Back to Eden or Back to the Garden of Eden. Anyway, I'm going to look it up and leave a link below. And that is, uh, of these videos and this concept was made by this guy in, I believe he's in Northern California, where he's just growing all this stuff using wood chips and I guess cow manure and whatever and having this bountiful crop. And he talks about how he's doing this, getting back to the way it was in the Garden of Eden and the way it is in nature where leaves fall off the trees and you end up with this super rich black soil in the forest and that kind of thing. So anyway, I'll leave a link for that. I think all that's very, very interesting. And uh, so anyway, I want to get on to uh, some, some other things that are in the scripture. And one of them, one of the things that uh, I misunderstood for years, and I think most people do unless they have really, really studied the scripture. And one of them is uh, that once... Uh, man sinned and, and was really apart from God. Uh, you know, before that, man lived a long time. And, and I remember a pastor one time saying it took Satan many, many years to, to start killing man a lot sooner. In other words, uh, was it Methuselah that lived 900 years and so many years to that? I don't know. But uh, if you read the Old Testament, you'll see how they lived hundreds of years. And so anyway, God said uh, in Genesis 6, 3, that, well, let's just, um, let me look that up, and I'll just read it right out of the Word. Because we don't think about this now, and we don't because we're looking around us and seeing what age people are when they die. 
or when most people die, I mean, the insurance actuaries do everything based on uh, the way people die. All right, so it, this is in, uh, well, let me read this one first in Psalms 90.10. Now, I'm going to leave these scriptures down below, too, so y'all can just, you know, you can look them up and read it for yourself in, in your Bible, whatever version you have. All right, so I'm looking up in, in Psalms, <clears throat> and it's uh, Psalm 90, verse 10. Let me get that. All right. The days of our years are three score years and ten, which is seventy years, or even if by reason of strength four score years, which would be eighty years old, which is what most people live to now, yet in their pride in additional years only labor and sorrow, for it is soon gone and we fly away. So most people think of this is what God's saying, well you're going to live to be seventy or eighty. and look around in the world, that's what people live to. Uh, I think men die off earlier than women, but most of the time when you see somebody in the, their 80s, you're thinking, they're going to be dead for long, right? And that what you think when you see old people? Because you know that people die at around age 80. But let's see what else was said about that. All right, so Genesis 6, 3. All right. Then the Lord said, my spirit shall not forever dwell and strive with man, for he also is flesh, but his days shall yet be 120 years. There it is, 120 years. So even with all the problems and whatever, he's still saying you can live to be 120. Now, if you know that, and if you're doing the right thing with your body, eating the right foods and all that, and can avoid all these major illnesses, he says you can live to be 120. Now, here's the thing. We have people in the earth to right now, today, who are even 120 and beyond. Now, they're not many, but they're some. And one of the things, now they've studied this with uh, on the island of Okinawa, how in the world do those people live so long? Now. They're, I think they've got an advertisement, I don't even know what they're advertising, on TV where they show these people in Okinawa, this real old couple, you know, riding a bicycle. And uh, there are other pockets in the world, or, uh, some of them around the Mediterranean Sea, where people live much longer than expected. So, Bucky and I have decided, Mr. Bucky and I have decided, that we're going to live to be 120. So we're planning our life now around that fact because we're going to believe God that we will live that long and we can contribute in the earth, right? I mean, if you're just piddling around in the earth and you're sick and got all these diseases, you might not want to live that long. But the whole idea is to, to see if we can't get well, you know, get well and stay well. All right, so that's, that's basically what's in the scripture that I looked at. Now, I searched the whole thing and, uh, you know, it, it, the only part that I really got stumped by was him promising the uh, children of Israel a land flowing with milk and honey. Now, I'll grant you the milk back then was a lot different than our milk today. I'm very sure of that because uh, they do give the cows hormones. First of all, a cow's got to, I think, have a calf. We, we might have some cattle people watching, but I think it's every two years or s surely not every year. I don't know. But uh, then the cow gives milk, and I remember uh, my grandma's cow going dry, and so they'd have to take it somewhere and let it mate, I guess, and you know get pregnant with a calf, and then have the calf, and then produce milk again. And uh, so now, the, in these big dairy farms, they, they can give them hormones, and uh, the cow will just give tons of milk. I mean, a lot of milk. So anyway, I want to go on to another, uh, little thing I want to talk about. I'll be right back. I've got to go let my dogs in because they're going to be at the door barking. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. I had to go let them in because otherwise they'd be barking and barking out there because it's really hot. It's supposed to get up to 95 today. And uh, so anyway, the second part of this that I wanted to talk about was I started uh, looking for the for the bottom reason why people 
uh, were, were making green smoothies. Where did the idea of that come from? It had to come from somewhere. So I started looking at tons of videos and I never could really find anything on, you know, where somebody would say, oh, 20 years ago I started drinking green smoothies or whatever. And, but I finally figured it out that you're, you remember the juice man that used to be on TV and when the, the juicing thing, the craze hit, I'm thinking that was probably 20 years ago. And I don't remember the guy's name, but y'all know who I'm talking about. Anyway, he uh, got sick or something. And, uh, and I don't remember all the details of that, but anyway, he ended up going to a doctor's clinic and I think it was in New York, and, uh, and he started getting well. I don't even remember the disease he had, but, but he had a problem. And of course, he's still alive today. I'm sure he's in his 90s, or I don't think he's 100 yet, but he's certainly in his 90s. And him and his wife both uh, appear to be very healthy. Uh, but anyway, he was on TV a lot, and you know, I can still see, uh, watching those, uh, some of his shows, I think on Saturday afternoon, uh, and he would be uh, trying to, I guess, sell the juicer that he was uh, juicing with. And I can remember him uh, cutting up the um, cantaloupe and, you know, into a slice and putting the whole slice, peeling and all, because he said, you know, so much n uh, nutrients are in the peeling and all this stuff. So, uh, and by the way, during that time, we did get a juicer. That was my first experience with juicers. And uh, I can remember the one that we liked most was sweet potato and apple. Of course, the sweet potato being raw. And uh, anyway, that's how we got, uh, got to, to, to the juicing part m many years ago. And so anyway, I kept searching it out further to see, well, where did this juice man, how did he come up with that? And of course, I found it. Now, I want to show you this. There's the book. And um, it was a, a Dr. Gerson who discovered the benefits of uh, raw juicing and um, what it meant to your health. And uh, now I don't agree with all the things that they do in this book. I mean, they've got a clinic down in Mexico and all that. Uh, and I'll just tell you up front, they do. Uh, coffee enemas and all that kind of stuff. But the basic principle of, of what uh, Dr. Gerson discovered is still true today. And how do I know that? Because Mr. Bucky and I are living proof of it, of how good we feel at our age. I mean, I would dare say I could outwork a 20-year-old now. I think I could. And before, I mean, I could always work pretty good, but I would get tired now I can work. I do a lot of stuff, and uh, unless I get sick with something like with the red bug thing, that kind of you know knocked me out of commission for a couple of days, and uh, the pneumonia kind of slowed me down. But even all through that, I was still doing my normal work and cooking meals and everything, you know. But anyway, I wanted to read you this. Um, now it's Dr. Max Gerson, G E R S O N. And this is a book that was written by uh, another person and his daughter, Charlotte Gerson, and she, I guess she's in her 80s now. But anyway, um, he was uh, born in Germany in uh, 1881, and uh, he became a doctor and all. And uh, he, he, was, uh, he wanted to know if there wasn't something in nature that could help people. You know what I'm saying? That's what he was looking for. And I mean, he was a medical doctor. So, I wanted to find that place where I wanted to read where he, he actually uh, had uh, addressed uh, Congress. And, uh, and let me, wait a minute, I gotta find it, because it's not very long. All right. I'm going to be right back. i got to find that because I want to read it to you. Okay, I found it. It was in the introduction. Anyway, the, uh, remember he was born in 1881. So uh, this is part of excerpts, excerpts from his address uh, that he made to Congress, and it was in uh, July, Wednesday, July 3rd, 1946. He, and this is, this is what he said. My office and residence is at 815 Park Avenue, New York City. 
I am a member of the American Medical Association, Medical Society of New York State, and Medical Society of New York County. My office and oh wait a minute, I already read that. Uh, the, the dietetic treatment, which has for many years been known as the Gershon diet, was developed first to relieve my own severe migraine condition. He was having migraine headaches. Then it was successfully applied to patients with allergic conditions such as asthma, as well as diseases of the intestinal tract and the liver pancreas apparatus. By chance, a patient with lupus vulgaris, which is skin tuberculosis, was cured following the use of the diet. After this success, the dietetic treatment was used in all other kinds of tuberculosis, bones, kidneys, eyes, lungs, and so forth. Now, his daughter had tuberculosis and got cured of it. It, too, was highly favorable in many other chronic diseases such as arthritis, heart disease, chronic sinusitis, uh, chronic ulcers, including colitis, high blood pressure, psoriasis, uh, multiple sclerosis, and so forth. The most striking results were seen in the restoration of various kinds of liver and gallbladder diseases, which could not be influenced by other methods up to the present. The great number of chronic diseases which responded to the dietetic uh, treatment showed clearly that the human body lost part of its resistance and healing power as it left as it left the way of the natural nutrition for generations. The fundamental damage starts with the use of artificial fertilizer for vegetables and fruits as well as for fodder, in other words, feeding the cattle. Thus, the chemical transformed vegetarian and meat nourishment increasing through generations transforms the organs and functions of the human body in the wrong direction. Another basic defeat lies in the waste of excrements of the cities. Instead of returning the natural manure to the fruit-bearing soil, it is let into the rivers, killing underwater life. The natural cycle is interrupted, and mankind has to suffer dearly for the violation. Life in forest and wilderness should teach us the lesson. So in other words, he's certainly saying that let's get back to the way things used to be. But we can regain the lost defense and healing power if we return as, a, as close as possible to the laws of nature as they were created. Highly concentrated for speedy reaction, they are laid down in the dietetic treatment. The first cancer patient, which had bile duct cancer, was treated in 1928 with success. Seven favorable cases followed out of 12 and remain free of symptoms up to seven years. My experience leads me to believe that the liver is the center of the restoration process in those patients who improved strikingly. If the liver is too far destroyed, then the treatment cannot be effective. Aware of the imperfections of this as well as any other theory, I shall try nevertheless to explain the end result of the Gershon diet it is condensed in three surprising components. The elimination of toxins and poisons and returning of the displaced extracellular group connected with toxins, poisons, edema, destruction, inflammation from the tissues, tumors, and organs where it does not belong into the serum and tissues where it belongs. Gallbladder with the bile ducts, connective tissue, thyroid, stomach, mucus, kidney, medulla, tumors, and so forth, bringing back the lost intracellular K, or potassium, group combined with vitamins, enzymes, ferments, sugar, and so forth, into the tissues and organs where they belong. Now, uh, what he's really saying is the nutrition needs to really be from organic fruits and vegetables and nuts and all that, and that when you get the body back the way it's supposed to be, a lot of diseases are going to just disappear. That, that's really what he's saying. And I have to agree with that. Now, uh, a lot of the book, and, and y'all might want to get this book or, or one of his original books. Let me show it to you again. I got this from Amazon. It's called The Gershon Therapy. Now, of course, we didn't get it because either one of us have cancer or anything like that. 
I got it because I wanted to know where all this green smoothie business started and the juicing and everything. And of course, uh, when, when you read the book, you're going to be astonished at some of the things they did. And yet, amazingly, these people recovered by just diet, not having to have all this chemotherapy and all that kind of stuff. And of course, back then, they didn't know hardly anything about how the, the um, uh, radiation treatment would be for, for patients and a lot of the chemical therapy they didn't have back then. So a lot of people, I guess, just died back then. And we're certainly making a lot of progress, certainly to do with cancer and heart disease now, which are the, I guess, heart disease being the number one killer in our country. But uh, anyway, I just wanted to share that with y'all and, and, and sort of show you what has, what has framed the way we're eating now. Now, I would like it if we didn't eat meat at all. I would. I would like that. Because I know, just from my past experience of being vegan, that once you stop eating meat and it's been a couple of weeks, you, you really lose the ability to digest it like you did before. I guess it takes certain enzymes, and if you're not eating meat and you don't need them, I guess your body doesn't produce those enzymes anymore. But I do remember when I did start back eating animal products, uh, in the beginning, I got nauseated. I did. and uh, But, um, of course, Mr. Bucky never went off meat com completely. and. Uh, so uh, what we have done, though, is greatly reduced the amount of meat and animal products that we use. Now, in my cakes, I use milk and eggs and butter. I do. And uh, so, uh, you know, I don't know what the answer to all this, but I just wanted to talk with you all about this and show you or really tell you where I was coming from on the food and everything. I still like my sweets. I like my desserts. and. I can't imagine making a cake without eggs. I mean, you can make it with bananas and you can use the chia seeds and let them get the same texture as eggs and uh, that kind of thing. But I just, I'm too old to change that. I, I mean, I, I like my desserts, I do. And, uh, but we do try to eat uh, no more than, than three ounces of meat. Now, we probably have meat, I'd say, three times a week maybe, maybe four, uh, and it, but it'd be really rare for us to eat more than three ounces. Now, I think when, when I fixed uh, those pork chops that I did on the grill, oh, that was more than three ounces, and they were so good, we both of us ate all of ours, but as a general rule, we don't do that. We don't go out and get steaks or anything. Uh, and we just don't eat that much. We, we fill up more with the fruits and vegetables than we do the meat. And as far as the milk, now I'm lactose intolerant. It, it, you know, I get a real bad stomach ache if I would just drink a big glass of milk. And uh, Mr. Bucky doesn't drink milk. He used to, but he doesn't drink milk anymore. And, uh, but I do use it in cooking. And, um, and also he uses, um, he has started back drinking his coffee. Yesterday and today he drank coffee. So he's gotten his appetite back and his taste is back from after going through the food poisoning. But anyway, I just wanted to share all that with you. Uh, now, I know a lot of you won't agree with me, and that's fine. You're certainly entitled to your opinion. Uh, but we have uh, been searching this out, and particularly me, for, for quite a number of years now. And uh, I, I know how I feel. And I, I, I guess, that, I mean, what other way can you determine how it's working. I, that's all I know to figure is how do you feel? I mean, because I felt bad in my life. I, I can remember when I worked coming home exhausted, just absolutely exhausted, and I just almost never get that way anymore. I mean, I got to do a lot of work to get exhausted now. And and look at my age. You got to think about that. That, that must be saying something. So uh, I'm still studying. I mean, I'm still looking up different things, and uh, uh, I'm going to definitely order me some uh, dinosaur kale seeds, and I'm going to plant those, and uh, because that's the healthiest of all the kale. Now they're saying that the uh, spinach can be as healthy as the uh, kale is. I just think you need to, to put you need to be drinking green smoothies because that way you get your greens out of the way right to start with in the day. And uh, now I loved cooked greens, but of course in the smoothies we're using raw greens and getting all those nutrients that, that are there 
and that's of course the main reason I got a Vitamix because it grinds it all up and, and your body can, you don't have to do any chewing, you just swallow it and your body uh, can absorb it a lot easier. All right, I'm going on and on, right? Anyway, uh, this book, my main information comes from this book, my Amplified Bible, but I thought this was very interesting reading. Now, the people and the cases they're talking about in this book were already sick with the disease, already. Uh, I think that there is uh, uh, an answer to the uh, type 2 diabetes that we got in this, we've got in this country, and I don't think all the answer is, oh, just don't eat any sugar. I think it's more to it than that. You know, I think you're going to have to to get healthy all the way around, not just stop eating sugar. I think there's a lot of things that instead of eating this, you eat this. And uh, certainly, uh, we know that, uh, remember the Atkins diet? And of course, that was all meat and very few vegetables, but there were people then that got rid of their type 2 diabetes just going on the Atkins diet. So, so there's something here, and I think we all need to search out for ourselves and know what works for us. But, but I don't think that you are destined to have to be sick. I, I don't. I, you know, God promises 120 years. That's what he said. And I just believe that he meant that. I do. Now, you know, in Psalms it says three score and ten and more by reason of whatever, maybe four score, eighty. So, but, but why couldn't we live longer than that? I mean, if you're eating right and, and you're, you know, getting enough rest and enough exercise, taking in enough fluids, your body knows how to heal itself. It really does. I mean, look, here, look at this. That was the, that was the uh, uh, chigger bite and the swelling's gone down and you know it's got a little scab on it and soon it'll be like it wasn't even there. No doctor medicine did that. My body knew how to do that. First it reacted to the invasion and then it started trying to get rid of the invasion because it would ooze and run, the little bite would, and now it's got a scab on it and the swelling's gone down and it's still puffed up a little bit my body did that. It, 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 your body knows how to heal itself. It really does. So think about it. A, a doctor isn't the one that caused that to get a scab on it, and I know it's going to go away. He, a doctor didn't give me medicine to do that. Now, I used uh, Benadryl cream. I used um, uh, hydrocortisone. And you know what really helped stop the itch? Just run hot water. I'm getting the bath and just run the water as hot as you can stand it. That's what stopped the itching. So uh, anyway, there are all kinds of drugs you can use for all kinds of things, but think about it. When you, when you, become, when, when you uh, end up with type 2 diabetes, and my sister has that, my older sister, her diet is terrible now. Uh, she eats a pumpkin pie that's been sweetened with uh, one of those artificial sweeteners, and uh, she uh, eats um, Ensure or one at Lucerna, one of those things, and she almost can't eat anything else or her blood sugar goes way up. I mean, it's terrible. And I think she uh, eats some green stuff a little bit, but uh, she can. Um, like when I was talking with her about the green smoothies and of course putting the orange juice in it, she said, well, I couldn't do that because I can't do that much orange juice. My blood sugar is going to go way up. So what you need to do is get to the bottom of the problem before you get sick. Do something now. Don't wait till you get sick. Do it now and, and notice how much better you feel. That's the true answer. Now, I've had, <clears throat> excuse me, I've had people write in and on my little private thing, you know, where they said, I spend a lot of time every day answering those little private emails that come in. Uh, because I, I feel sort of obligated, you know, when they ask me a question, I'm not a, 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 a nutritionalist, but, but I do know how, what it's done for us, and I would like to help if I can. But uh, write in and tell me, well, <clears throat> they, would, uh, they would drink the green smoothies if they could get past the color. I, I had somebody say that to me. If I could get past that green color, I would, I would be doing green smoothies. 
close your eyes. Close your eyes and drink the smoothie. You will never taste it. But they just couldn't get past the idea. Well, you gotta get past the idea because there you, you can put almost anything you can imagine in a smoothie and be able to drink it if you put enough stuff in that tastes good to you, like I do, I put sugar in it. I mean, it, when it's sour or bitter, I don't like it, but uh, I don't really, ha I don't think I put that much sugar in, but, and some things, sometimes I don't put sugar in at all if, if I have enough dates in it. And of course the dates would be the natural sugar, right? So anyway, I'm going on and on again. Okay, y'all. Uh, anyway, y'all leave me comments and you can send me private messages. I mean, I get all those messages and I'd be happy to answer them, but I, I can't tell you about your, uh, your exact health problem because of course I'm not a doctor or whatever, but I can just tell you how it works for us, okay? And all you have to do really is watch those uh, videos and look at the videos before we started doing the green smoothies and look at them now. There's a big difference. And even my complexion, my hair got thicker. Yeah, my hair got thicker. And what ended up happening, I actually had, I cut about five inches off of my hair because when I wore it in a ponytail, it was heavy enough that it gave me a headache. And I'm like, every day I was getting a headache in the afternoon, maybe about two or three o'clock I had a headache. And, uh, but I noticed when I would take my hair down from the ponytail, the headache would go away. So then I thought, okay, and, but my hair got thicker. It actually got thicker after we were doing the green smoothies. So normally when you get older, your hair gets thinner, right? Well, mine started getting thicker and Mr. Bucky's is even getting thicker. And he's very happy with that. He's got new hairs that kind of stick up on top. You know, he combs it over and, they kind of stick up on top where you can see the new hairs coming in. So maybe this works better than that. What is that medicine that you can get or some kind of cream you put on your hair to make new hair grow? Maybe the green smoothies work better than that. They might, yeah, they might. All right, I'm gonna definitely go. I could talk for another hour. All right, we will see y'all next time. And I didn't mean to offend anybody because all this is just general stuff. If you're not of the Christian faith, then you know, you can just disregard what I read out of the Bible, but, but the, the, the way you eat it would make no difference what your religion was, okay? All right, we'll see y'all next time.